Today we're very pleased to have with us Lorelei Kraft. Lorelei is an author, producer, speaker, and coach. She was inducted into the Minnesota Women Business Owners Hall of Fame in April, and she has appeared on ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, and PBS. Lorelei has written numerous books. Two that she co-authored became number one bestsellers. Her documentary on the building of the village at Osage by a remarkable group of 12 women has been featured on PBS five times. Lorelei usually speaks on business topics. Today, however, she is going to speak on a subject dear to her heart, th that of the often forgotten history of women. Her topic is the forgotten women pilots of World War II. Welcome to Lorelei. Hi. I'm going to tell you a story some of you have heard already, which is uh, what happened to me the very, very, very first time I gave a public speech. And it was in Detroit Lakes, so I'm not, you know, a little away from here. I'm not telling too many tales. Um, this, this was in the days before women were allowed to join Rotary. And the Rotary in DL asked me to come and speak about the building of the Village of the Smoky Hills, which many of you might remember was an incredible project that 12 women, local women, did, and did it in five weeks and five days. So they said, come and talk to us about this. So when I get there, I'm the only woman in the room. And the priest gave the blessing on the food. And he said, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful weather we've been having for the tourists this summer. And we thank you, Lord, for the 30,000 people that came to town for a water carnival last week. And we thank you, Lord, for the village of the Smoky Hills. But don't forget, Lord, that women are taking over the world. <laughs> and please don't forget that they need special guidance. Oh, I was the only woman in the room. And all I could think to say was, what I wanted to say but didn't, was don't worry, I talked to God and she said it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> However, being the only one in the room, I said nothing and the day went steadily down from that. <laughs> Today I'm gonna talk about the forgotten women pilots of World War II. And up there is their motto, we live in the wind and sand, our eyes are on the stars. I got a newsletter from one of the women's organizations I belong to, and there was a little blurb, and it said, there will be a reunion of the remaining living women pilots of World War II at Avenger Field in Sweetwater, Texas on May 26th. Who? I had never heard of them, and I was a history teacher. There was nothing in the books when I was growing up about these women. So I thought, why, who are they and why haven't I heard about them? So what I did was I ordered this book from the WASP organization, and it's called Flying for Her Country, the American and Soviet Women Military Pilots of World War II. Um, I'm only going to talk about the American pilots today, but the Soviets had women pilots who actually engaged in combat, and the Germans called them the night witches. They were so good. <laughs> they were very, very, you know, very good. So I got the book and I started doing some reading on this and some research. And to give you a little background of what happened, okay, in 1939 Hitler invaded Poland. In May of 1940 he attacked France, Netherlands, the Belgium, and Paris fell by June of that year. In July of 1940 Germany began bombing England. And in December of 1940, Germany prepared for the invasion of the Soviet Union. Now, by 1942, the red was what Hitler had already taken over. In less than three years, he had gotten control of more land than the Roman Empire. Um, they even went into Africa, and they were pushing Rommel. Rommel was pushing them then back from... Uh, the borders. Um, we were not part of the war. 
the American public wasn't interested really at that point because of what had happened after World War II. You know, we were had our fill of war, uh, World War I. And, um, however, we continued to supply the Allies with war materials. Roosevelt felt that we were going to be drawn in, and so he really put our economy on a war footing. You know, he upped the Army and the Air Forces. Um, he got the domestic factories to retool, so instead of turning out cars, they started turning out tanks and ships and fighters. At that time, we had over 3,000 women, licensed women pilots in this country. And you have to remember, this is in a time before most women even had a driver's license. And so here we had these women, and these women wanted to join in and participate and serve their country. We had some very famous ones. Amelia Earhart, of course, was the first woman who flew solo across the Atlantic. We had Jackie Cochran. She held more speed and distance and altitude records in aviation than any other pilot, male or female. So all of these women wanted to participate and to serve. However, the military resisted it. Um, they said it wasn't appropriate for women to fly. The female body was unsuited to the rigors of flying. Women were way too high strung. A military doctor warned that women who flew airplanes would never be able to bear children. <laughs> sort of reminds me back in the 18, late 1800s where a medical doctor said that if you taught a little girl to read, her uterus would shrivel up. <laughs> Actually, we have some people in our country today who still believe that. <laughs> um, they went to Eleanor Roosevelt and said, help us get into the military, and she tried, and it didn't work. But then came Pearl Harbor. December 7th, 1941, Japan attacked us. December 8th, we declared war on Japan. And December 11th, Germany declared war on the United States. Now, General Hap Arnold, who had been opposed to women in the military, okay, at this point said, you know what, we need them. We need women to ferry our troops, uh, not our troops, but to the ships um, to wherever they were being built. They had to be ferried to a battlefield area. Um, they had to do test piloting of new planes. They had to do target. You know, they flew and they carried the targets behind them. Um, and the gunners on the ground had practice at the what they were dragging behind them, oftentimes missed. <laughs> but anyhow, and, and so Hap Arnold said, you know what, we have got to bring our women into the military. Um, at that point, the, the Nancy Love had something called the Women Air Force Service Pilots. And they merged with Ka uh, Jackie Cochran's group called and created the WASP program, which is Women Air Force Service Pilots. And so they combined into one group. 